Good morning. It's Wednesday, July 3rd, 2019. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, More Than Enough, and our scripture is 2 Kings chapter 4. One day, the widow of a member of the group of prophets came to Elisha and cried out, My husband who served you is dead, and you know how he feared the Lord. But now a creditor has come threatening to take my two sons as slaves. What can I do to help you? Elisha asked. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all except a flask of olive oil, she replied. And Elisha said, Borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it's filled. So she did as she was told. Her sons kept bringing jars to her, and she filled one after another. Soon every container was full to the brim. Bring me another jar, she said to one of her sons. There aren't any more, he told her. And then the olive oil stopped flowing. When she told the man of God what had happened, he said to her, Now sell the olive oil and pay your debts, and you and your sons can live on what's left over. Scripture goes into great detail to make the point that faith requires little in the way of wealth, health, or strength as the world sees such. The widow of one of Elisha's prophet band had nothing to her name but a flask of olive oil, and the wolves were at the door. When Elisha delivered the word of the Lord to her, she did what she was told. Faith in God is always a matter of obedience, even in the face of great odds or little understanding. The widow's might and offering of less than a penny's value by a woman who had less than poverty to live on is often held up as the example of true Christian stewardship. Heaven's standard for judging your offering is never a matter of how much you give, but what you have left to keep. And while that's so, faith is not the sole possession of those on the margins. We must also see that the size of your portfolio never determines if your faith is great, puny, or non-existent. Sometimes those who are rich and strong and well-placed in society are also people of great faith. Job was rich, but he was also a man of intense, durable faith. In fact, he was among the richest, healthiest, and most respected men of his time. John Wesley had fortunes pass into and out of his hands in his lifetime, but as a true man of God, those fortunes found ways to bless those less fortunate. Jesus warned about the trap riches can be to your spiritual health. The rich young ruler preferred his money rather than eternal life. The successful farmer built bigger barns to store his biggest crop ever rather than sharing with his neighbors. And the rich man, Dives, ignored Lazarus the beggar right on his doorstep. But sometimes I believe we must be put in difficult circumstances for us to actually see how relying on God, or faith, is our biggest need. And that was the entire point of Jesus' teaching in each of those three stories. The rich young ruler, the successful farmer, and cold-hearted Dives all trusted their wealth to carry them into a comfortable life. They were wrong. The allure of riches comes with a hook, a hook that sets in your soul and yanks it far from the heavenly courts above. For you today, it's not wrong to have the blessing of money. God can do great things through people who are generous and also listening for the Spirit's direction how to use what little or great blessings He's put in your hand. But those people for whom money has become their God, the question they really need to hear is, have you ever seen a U-Haul trailer hitched to a hearse? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.